When building modern microservice applications, sooner or later you will face the problem of authentication and authorization. Currently, the worldwide standard for handling authentication and authorization in the microservice architecture is with the JWT tokens. And that means that sooner or later your application will have to validate if the token it received in the authorization header is valid and if the caller should be trusted or not. In other words, you have to validate the JWT, check if it's correctly signed and is coming from the trusted issuer. Luckily, the whole process is not really complicated and you can have your own custom validator written with only a few dozens of lines. There are ready-made libraries that provide the heavy lifting code for the token validation. However, you will still have to connect those provided methods into the JWT validation flow. The steps to secure token validation are 1. Check if the ISS claim is on the list of the token issuers you trust. B. Obtain the issuer's public key. C. Run the validation with the date, with the issuer and with the public key of the issuer. Only with those three steps you will be able to make sure that the token really was issued by the issuer you trust and the caller of your application can be trusted, can be authenticated and at the end can be authorized. I've created a simple Java application that does all of that and in a second we're gonna have the walkthrough of the code. The code is of course available on the GitHub. In the description there is a link to the repository so you can go there, check it out and see by yourself how simple really the JWT validation is. The example I prepared is the Java-based Maven application that uses two libraries to verify the token. First of all it's the com out o java jwt and com out o jwks rsa first one is required to be able to decode the token and verify the token the second one will be required to verify if the signature is correct and also to obtain the public key from the issuer. Bear in mind the example is designed to work with the key cloak if the RSA 256 signing algorithm is used. If using different issuers or different signing algorithm you will have to make adjustments especially for the URL to obtain the public key from the issuer and also to choose different algorithm for the verification. But today we will not really go into the details because the Kicklock is most probably the most popular issuer over here. Having the Maven dependencies configured we can go into our application. As you can see the application really instantiates the JWT validator, the class that we will create or we created just a moment ago and then runs a single method validate. In the example we are using some that clearly is not a valid JWT because lorem ipsum definitely is not a valid JWT and in case the invalid parameter exception occurs it assumes that the token was invalid. If however the exception will not be thrown then the decoded JWT from which you will be able to read on the claims will be returned and your application will be able to proceed from this point according to your own logic. The only public method in the JWT validator is the validate method. It does the following. First of all it tries to decode the incoming string and check if it's really a JWT token. Bear in mind decode only decodes the token does not verify if the claims are correct. If the syntax is correct it will return the decoded JWT object. If however the syntax is not correct it will throw the exception which we will be able Able to catch below and throw the invalid parameter exception with the message that well the decoding failed. The next super important step is to check if the issuer claim holds the issuer that you trust. That means that we will have to compare if the get issuer method from the decoded JWT object is in our internal list of the allowed issuers. The list of the allowed issuers is defined in the JWT validator and bear in mind this is only the example. Such a URL does not exist and there is no key cloak running on this URL. You will have to fill the URL together with the realm name of your key cloak 
service and it should be the keycloak service that you own and you manage. If the issuer is authorized, then we proceed. If not, then we will throw and catch the exception to inform everything outside that the verification failed. You absolutely never should continue the verification of the token if the ISS claim in the token is not the one you trust. There is always a chance that you will get something injected if you will call the issuer that you don't trust. The next step is to load the public key of the issuer. It's a relatively simple job. There is the out0 URL JWK provider, which only you have to initialize with the URL under which the keycloak instance will provide its public key and call the method on the provider to get the public certificate and return the public key as the output of the load public key. And then when your application loaded the public key of the issuer, we can set up the algorithm with the RSA256 and the public key and prepare the verifier instance to run the validation. And finally, run it. The verify method will check if the token signature is correct, matches the public key of the issuer, as well it will validate if the token has not expired yet. Yes, it will handle the date validation for you. And finally, when the verify method succeeds, there is nothing we want from the method. We can just return the decoded JWT object obtained from the decode method. If, however, the verification will fail, the verify method will throw the exception, which then we will try and retrow the invalid parameter exception with the message from the original exception. Of course, you can improve the code. For example, if there is only one issuer that you really trust, you can have the public key of this issuer stored locally, so you do not have to reach for the issuer every time to get the public key from the issuer. This, of course, has a problem because when the issuer will change the public key, you will also have to update the public key in your application or all applications that are already storing the previous public key of the issuer. But if you decide to keep the dynamic loading of the public key of the issuer, it's a good chance to add some kind of the cache so that not every time you get a token, you have to call the issuer to get the public key. The Guava cache library should work just fine in this case. I'm Paweł Spychalski and I have more than 20 years of professional software development experience. If you would like to know more about the JWT tokens and how they work, here's the video for you. If you have any comments or the suggestions, please write them down in the comment section of this video. Thank you very much for watching and, like always, happy coding!